Hey, listen, today we're reviewing a new product, the Pure Over, here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saugatuck, and welcome to the Obus Lab. Hey, listen, today we're going to be looking at something called the Pure Over. And the Pure Over is something, I mean, you noticed when you came in on the shot that I was looking at my phone. This is one of these nagging commercials that says, we have a better solution to coffee making. And the problem that they're trying to solve is to use less filters. And their claim is it's 23,000 filters in a lifetime that somebody uses. And so they have a solution. I ordered one just to get them off my back, but we're <laughs> going to take a look at it. So I'm going to open it up right in front of you here and we'll get right into it, assemble it and give it a run for its money. Now, speaking of money, there's really two things that you can order. There's the, the brewing mechanism itself, which is this, and that goes for $59. And then if you're, oh, if you're one of the first, they say, they want us to tag them on Instagram. That may or may not be happening. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and then they also sell a separate cup for $29. This is a $29 cup. But, wow. Well, wait a minute. If you get them both, it's only $75. I feel like I'm in a Ron Popeil moment. <laughs> and if you don't know who that is, you're definitely under 50. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and unbox this a little bit. It's, it's, it's an attractive uh, looking piece. I just don't know if I can get into it. Oh, here we go. Um, I don't know if you can come in and, and get a shot of that. Yeah. These are all the parts. I'll go through them in just a minute. They give you the instructions right here. Uh, it comes with a, a base. Uh, it comes with the, uh, basically the, the brew chamber right here. It comes with a diffuser, uh, a water diffuser, kind of like the Gabby. And, and we can put a, a, a link up to the Gabby up here and they give you a stir stick. And that's pretty handy. Uh, the instructions, I'm gonna take them out and we're gonna review those in just a minute. Let's see what we think. All right, and then our $29 cup uh, comes with its own coaster. Uh, very solid, very nice looking. And you know, one of the advantages of, of getting their cup though is that the idea is you could uh, brew right into the cup right there. I have to say that is a very attractive a piece of, equi of equipment. Oh, totally. I mean, uh, th this looks like a design house uh, kind of coffee maker here and and the way it comes packaged and everything is very sort of uh, high quality you know Apple-esque uh, making packaging itself an experience all right so I'm gonna go ahead and look at the instructions here and it says that we're gonna need 20 grams of coffee and 10 ounces of water at 210 degrees so well give me a minute here and we'll be right back I'm going to get the kettle and I'm going to get the grinder. All right, we've got everything unpacked uh, from before. Uh, now we've got a grinder and we've got our uh, water kettle ready to go. And of course, we've got some coffee ready to go. So I'm just going to follow the instructions as they, as they want us to do it. And the, the first instruction, of course, is uh, 20 grams of coffee. And uh, we need to tear this out. Did that go to zero? Yes, it did. Perfect. So we're going to do 20 grams of coffee. And you know, I'm, I love my Airscape right here. Uh, it keeps coffee fresh. We're using Bigby Best, which is one of the Farm Direct uh, coffees that we have. And by the way, I'm using a tablespoon. One, two, three, four. How many grams? 21.5. All right, this is going to be important. So I used four tablespoons. We've got 21.5. I'm going to take some of the grammage off and get it down to darn near perfect. Is that darn near perfect? That is right on. Right on the money. All right, good. 
and we're going to grind this up right here. Uh, the way we're going to do that is I'm going to give it a little spritz of water. And what that does, and, and we have an episode on this. Uh, this is like three pro tips on, on a grinder. We'll put it up there. Uh, but it takes the static electricity out of the grinding process. I'm going to get this in here, turn the grinder on first, slide it in, and turn it off. Because I already ground some coffee for you, so you didn't have to listen to me grind coffee. Right? <laughs> okay, so I've got 20 grams ready to go in here. Now, um, what they say to do is have your whole mechanism right in front of you. And... Pour the coffee straight into this mechanism. Okay, so we're going to do that. Uh oh. Yeah, there's a problem here. Now they said to grind this on medium, and I, I ground it on medium, but it looks like coffee's coming through. This is more like a shaker uh, in some ways. Obviously, medium is not coarse enough. So we're going to have to reset here and we're going to go to a coarser grind. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and I've got a coarser grind in here already. Uh, something closer to a French press, uh, which is not a medium grind. That is a coarse grind, but I just didn't want all that coffee uh, to go through into my cup. Uh, you know, I want to drink my coffee, not chew my coffee. Uh, I also noticed on the directions they have a couple of uh, tips on how to weigh out coffee differently. One was to use four tablespoons of coffee, and you saw when I was scooping in uh, coffee for measurement earlier, I used four tablespoons. That came to 21 and a half grams, so not 20 grams. And, and that's one of the problems with the volumetric uh, measurement is it's imprecise. It's, it's volume versus mass, and mass is always a more consistent measuring tool. And then they give a, a tip, it, like maybe you don't have a tablespoon. What you could do is use the diffuser as your measuring device. And, and I guess in some ways, you know, that's kind of clever that maybe they made that the size of about 20 grams of coffee. Keeping in mind, too, that, uh, you know, if it was roasted darker, if it was roasted light, that, that grammage would change by volume. But I'm just going to go ahead. Well, first, got to tear this out uh, so that we can get a fair measurement. There we go to zero. And I will do one level scoop using the diffuser. I think that that is level. And uh, the actual grammage, again, is 21.6. Right. So um, did I get that right? Yeah. OK. Yeah, I did get that right. So uh, if you want 20 grams and if you're expecting 20 grams, use a scale if you can. Uh, we have a coffee scale here, but, you know, for the longest time at home, we used our, our Weight Watchers uh, scale and you can decide how that's working for us or not. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next step is to essentially and, and you know, you can buy their cup, and, and here it is. It's very uh, uh, aesthetically pleasing. It matches uh, the, the device. But uh, you could really use any cup to do this with. You don't need their cup. And then the diffuser needs to go on top. And uh, that diffuser, to me, reminds me a lot of the Gabby, and that's something that we can use uh, when we do a V60 pour-over or something like that to get an even pour over, over the pour-over, right? And this is called the pour over and really it's it's kind of like uh, a pour over i do need to level this out you're supposed to give it a a little bit of a shake make sure it's level so i'm going to do that all right uh the next part of the instructions is to get 10 ounces of water in here now i, I again i don't like volume metric measuring because um the question here is if i have to measure off 10 ounces and put it in my kettle and then boil it the Will some of it boil off? Will I get down to 9.5 ounces uh, when, when we're done, fluid ounces? Or alternatively, I could just put a lot of water in here and then use a measuring cup and fill it up to 10 ounces. But then I'm going to get a heat loss between filling this container up and filling that container up. And by the way, I don't know, this might be a little bit more of a design house than a coffee house because uh, there's no instructions to preheat any of this. And you, we know that especially this glass at room temperature, it's going to be a heat sink right away to, to coffee poured over. But so we're going to use uh, grams of water and the conversion of grams of water uh, on 10 ounces of uh, 10 fluid ounces. Let me tear this out. Apparently I can't walk and talk at the same time. We're just having a discussion about that. But the 10 ounces, the 10 fluid ounces would be 296 grams. So that's our objective is to get 296 grams into here. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, water heated to 210 is their instructions. 
Uh, 210 is the answer if it's a dark roast, but if it's a lighter roast, you want to get that down to 206 or something like that. But uh, if you watch some of our other episodes, you'll know all about that. Uh, they do ask for a bloom, so we're just going to put in some measure of water here to allow for a bloom. So I'm going to look for those first few drafts to sort of uh, settle in there and wait for the, um, uh, the water to absorb in the grounds. But I don't know if you can come in a little bit here, uh, babe, but uh, it's kind of an incomplete bloom because this diffuser is narrow and it's just dropping down in a cylinder this way and the coffee bed is wide, right? So it's really hard to get uh, a, a full uh, version of a bloom. I'm going to add some more water and try to get that bloom. But as I, <laughs> I don't know if you're noticing this, but it's going through right away, right? right. So I can guarantee you that there's, th th right now it's under extracted, right? The coffee that we're getting. So I'm just going to try to get the rest of the 10 ounces in, uh, or not 10 ounces. We're looking at 296 grams and 10 fluid ounces. And we can pour aggressively because uh, if if we wanted to, maybe we could try to fill this up, but the flow rate out of this diffuser, I think probably needs to be choked up a little bit. But you can see as fast as I'm pouring, it's kind of going through, right? And anybody keeping, oh, you guys let me get to 301. But 301, 296, that's all right. I've got a whole team across from me that's supposed to help <laughs> keep an eye on that. But I think they were just so fascinated with what's going on here. All right, well, you know, like in a French press, uh, what happens is, and, and I, maybe you can get a little bit closer, but the coffee does float up to the top. And usually in a French press, we'll let that sit for two or three minutes and then break it, you know, kind of like break the crust so that it floats to the bottom. But, geez, we've lost almost all of our water already. Maybe that medium ground would have been a little bit better, but th this is... Um, we would have had grounds in our coffee if we would have kept it medium, right? Yeah, and actually I think I see a few grounds down there now, even with the coarse grind. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Well, and uh, the other thing I think I'm noting at this point is we're having what's called a choke. You know, that can happen in a V60 when you grind your, your coffee uh, too, too fine and it gets all caught up in the filter and dammed up on the bottom. But now virtually nothing is dripping out, but we still have a lot of water uh, left in here meant to come out. So uh, right now we've got about 90% of this uh, has come through rather rapidly uh, and uh, most likely under extracted. Now they say, hey, uh, make some agitation down here so you can get the rest of it out. And I'm going to try to do that. But yeah, I guess that worked. That worked. I will accept that. All right, well, um, that, that was the, the, the full boat process. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, a sip in a second. Uh, it is nice that they give you this little coaster to put this on because it will continue to drip a little bit. I do like the stir stick. I do like the design, but let me go ahead and give it a taste. I don't think it's going to be promising. Sorry. Yeah, uh, definitely weak and under extracted. So uh, bear with me. I want to I want to give some pointers on this, uh, maybe how to make it work. So we're going to be back in just a second. Okay, we're back, and um, you know my rating on the cup of coffee is low. Yeah, it's both. 90% uh, under extracted and and about 10% over extracted and that just doesn't make for a good cup of coffee. Um, I do want to mention, I mentioned earlier about the diffuser and uh, we do use the Gabby on a regular basis as a diffuser. Uh, this one, its its flow rate was just a little too fast. It, it, it should either have finer holes or more finer holes. And then also my, my only comment is it's, it's coming down in a narrow column on a very wide bed of coffee and that, that doesn't work out that well. Uh, we noticed the coffee choked in the end. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually coffee grounds caught in it. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that's, that's why it's going to choke out. 
and, and actually, you know, when I, when I dumped out the grounds, there, there were others that fell out of the hole. But, you know, the whole objective of this was let's save 23,000, let's save 25,000 filters in a lifetime, right, by not having a paper filter. But there are other ways to do that. You guys know that we use this on a, on a V60 and a Chemex all the time. This is a fine metal mesh filter. And look how much finer these holes are than the holes in this device here, or even in a very traditional Bowdoin French press, uh, it, it is a, it's a wire mesh, right? So uh, just, just a much finer, and, and so this needs to be a little bit finer. I don't know how you do that with glass, but that's uh, somehow these holes are, are too wide to, um, uh, from, from a flow rate perspective, and, 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 and the grounds are getting uh, clogged up in them. Uh, the other way to reduce uh, filter uh, is, you know, like you might still use uh, uh, a filter, but the AeroPress uses a filter that is that, is that big. It's just a, a single ply. And if you look at a traditional filter, uh, you know, with two sides, you, you can you can get use six of these for one of these, right? So if you were about the idea of filter reduction and let's not use paper and so on and so forth, the AeroPress would be a great solution also. Uh, my rating on this device is uh, I would love to put this on my shelf right back here because I think it looks very pretty. I think it's nicely designed. I think it's very aesthetic. Uh, I wouldn't use it as a, a method of making a cup of coffee for myself. I, I find it difficult. The last thing that uh, I would mention is it's it's all glass, right? And uh, one of the things, just like with a French press, and then you got you got to knock out the grounds. But um, I'm worried that while knocking out the grounds in my container, I'm going to snap this glass handle, and something bad is going to happen. I'm not saying that that's what would happen, uh, but this is a beautiful design piece, but not something I would use every day. All right. Uh, maybe you agree and maybe you disagree and if so please put it in the comments down below Give us a like give us a subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. You know our mission is to go farm direct We use the farm direct coffee today. It's our coffee from Nicaragua uh, We hope you uh, look up that story about Nicaragua on one big island in space But until I see you next time This is one thing I'd like to leave you with and that is when you love the world the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.